Hello everyone, it's Chelsea from Paper Octio Studio. Today I am working with the prompt abstract from the hashtag November Daily Art Journal Challenge. Today is day 27. Almost done. Almost done, people. Only three more to go. <laughs> so, I love abstract. I absolutely adore it. This is so fun. I could do this all day. Um, but there are a few, few things that you kind of have to think about when you're making something abstract. The word abstract seems like it should just be like, oh, you can just do whatever you want. Just throw it all on there and it'll call, it'll be abstract. And if you make a mess, so what? It's abstract. doesn't matter. However, in my opinion, and remember, I'm not a professional artist, um, I think that there still needs to be some place for your eyes to go. If it's just a big explosion of color and splatters and blah everywhere, which there are some out there that are very popular that are like that, I, I just don't appreciate those as much because I need somewhere for my eye to travel. I need it to be able to travel to a spot and then go from that spot to another spot and be contained within the piece. And if it's not, then my eyes just fall off the edge. And I didn't get it. I didn't understand it. So um, my way of dealing with that when I'm making something that's, quote, abstract is to use the, oh, there's a name for it. Is it the, is it the law of threes? I don't know. Anyway, you divide up your substrate into sections where, uh, a third, a third, and a third from the top, and a third, a third, and a third from the side. So you would end up, if you had a perfect square, you'd end up with nine little squares, right? And then the place that you want your eye to travel needs to be in one of those intersections where the lines cross. And my personal favorite is the top right intersection. So I'm going a third down from the top and two thirds over from the left hand side to make the area of focus on my piece that intersection and we'll discuss a little bit more about art journals and why they're a pain in the bottom <laughs> and why this this particular abstract piece became a real pain but in order to um, begin out my piece so that I can use this this law of thirds or whatever it's called. I can't remember right now because I didn't go to school for this. This is just something that I learned. Um, I'm using paper. I'm using collage. I love to collage on abstract. I love it. That's a great base for it. And these are different. Um, let's see. The bottom two are jelly prints. The one in the upper right corner is that uh, napkin that I was playing with the other day when I did the circles journal page and I got the um, color burst and brush -o powders all over it. <laughs> you remember that? And I said, oh, what a pretty napkin. I'm going to use this. Yeah, I did. It's actually, it's a, not a napkin, but a paper towel. Um, saturated with color and beautiful colors. So I decided to use it. And then the one in the top left corner is actually just extra paint. You know, when you have that excess paint on your palette and you just scrape it onto something, that's what that is. So you can use anything, you know, to collage with. I mean, just save your, your extra paint, save your scraps. Obviously, I mean, if you're making jelly prints, you're going to save those. Um, I think that the one on the left bottom was given to me. It was sent in a package as Happy Mail. I like it. It's got like water splots on it or something. It's pretty cool. And then um, the other one, I, I'm pretty sure I printed because I have that stencil. Yeah. So now you see what I mean. You've got two thirds over from the left and a third from the top and two thirds up from the bottom. Does that all make sense? I hope I'm making sense and I hope that I'm helping somebody understand what I'm saying because I know it's confusing. Um, but this is the way that I like to do it and I, I would do this over and over. This is so fun to me. So then the next thing I get out 
This time is dripping. What's more abstract than dripping? I mean, you can't control it, right? It's going to go where it's going to go. So I'm starting out with some, uh, these are golden high flow acrylic paint that's a highly pigmented paint, but these are from the, uh, tr the translucent set. And this is where I start to get in trouble already. And the trouble that I have has to do with the crease in the middle of the book, because this is a pre-constructed art journal, which this is a Dilusions small art journal. And when I'm doing the paint and I'm doing the dripping, it all wants to drip down into the crack. That's all it wants to do is run into the crack. Well, that makes sense because, you know, I'm putting water on it and it's liquid and it, you know, water goes to the path of least resistance. But the reason this is a problem is because the line that I'm trying to accent is the one to the right of that where everything intersects. That's where I want my focal point to be. But of course, all the dark color is running into the stupid crack. So then I knew I was going to use this dioxazine purple. So then I try to use it because it's a more intense color and, you know, accent that other line, the one that I'm, that I'm interested in. But guess what happens? The purple runs into the crack. <laughs> You see my problem? <laughs> so I just keep messing with it and I'm like, oh, I'm just mad. Stupid crack. Stupid crack. But that's the nature of art journals. They are, you know, books. They have cracks in them and that's just how it works. So I keep adding and I keep adding more paint. Um, I put some more green to try to make that green come all the way over to the line. Then I put in more of the, the dark purple trying to accent my intersection there that I'm trying to to highlight. But that other line is just there. It just won't. Well, it's not going to go away. I mean, it's just, it's there and it's going to be there and yeah, I should just get over it. <laughs> I should, but I don't. Curse that line. Curse it. <laughs> So then my next idea is I'll use the uh, titanium white because it's brighter. Okay, if the dark's not working, then use something brighter. And so there's nothing more bright than titanium white, right? It's bright. So then I put that on. It goes all over the place. I'm like, eh, I don't know. I don't really like it. So I try it again. <laughs> so you see, you see this, I mean, I am having fun. I'm slightly fr frustrated, but I am having fun. Um, I like to drip stuff. I like to drip paint. I think it's, it's just so fun. It gets all over my hands. I'm just completely coated by the end of this time, but it's fun and I like it. So that looks a little bit better. It's starting to detract from that other line, but I still have that dark line right down the middle and there's just nothing I can do about it. It's just nothing I can do about it except for try to detract from it. So then I get out some um, Prima Art Basics white crackle paste. This is a dimensional prod product that they have and it's supposed to crackle and crack when it dries and it does if you let it dry naturally but of course what did I do? I heated it with my heat tool so that you really couldn't see much cracking but it still looks cool. The name of this stencil is Pixelated, and I think it's a pretty cool stencil. It's a, one I got recently. So that helps because now your eyes are drawn on a diagonal going up ways, and you don't necessarily see that big dark line that's not supposed to be there as much. I mean, if you know it's there, then you're going to see it, but you might not see it as the first thing that you see. You know what I'm saying? I hope. <laughs> so then to, to uh, draw more interest to my focal area, um, I decided to cut out some circles and this is a chartreuse jelly print with, it had circles on it. So I'm just like using that circular image to cut them out, although they're not perfect and I didn't intend them to be perfect. If I wanted perfect circles, I would have used a, a punch 
or a die cut machine. I don't want them per perfect at all. But I did use the little design on that paper just for fun to kind of let them have a darker and lighter area. It also has a little bit of orange in it. Uh, excuse me. <laughs> that surprised me, that yawn. Um, which I think is a great contrasting color to this page with all the greens and blues and purples. So I stick those on. The, the glue that I'm using is... <coughs> oh man, I'm just having troubles. The glue I'm using is Liquitex Matte Gel Medium. It's a thicker gel version of matte medium which um, is what I like for heavy duty collaging like this and paper painting that's what I use if I use a very thin paper then I might use the liquid like a napkin or a magazine page something like that I might use the liquid or fluid matte medium but for this type of a application I really enjoy this gel medium it's thick and it helps things stick where they're supposed to stick. You know what I mean? <laughs> so I'm liking my uh, greenish chartreuse-ish with a little bit of orange circles. Um, that adds a lot to my design. You see my hands, they're crazy, crazy, crazy dirty. Then I get out my black Stabilo All pencil. This is a water soluble, highly water reactive pencil. And it works great for going around the edges of things and making them blend into the background better. You know, to add shading and um, contrast so that it doesn't look like it's glued on as much. And I activate that with my water barrel brush. That's a synthetic paintbrush that has water inside the handle which comes out when you need it when you squeeze it so I go around my circles and then along the lines and um, add a little bit of black there and blend it in with the water pretty good effect I like it so then my next trick is to get out some Inca gold this is a beeswax paste with mica and pigment in it and it's very very shimmery shiny and so I add my highlights to the circles using that and it's quite shimmery and shiny all over which really makes those circles pop out a lot then I decide I need some splatters so I've got the black high flow this is carbon black and I'm making splatters with the fan brush and then I decide I need a little bit bigger splatters so I get just a regular paintbrush and do splatters with that because I want them to be more bigger. The fan brush makes very small splatters which I like most of the time but I needed a combination and then I decide I need white ones also because you can't have too many splatters. And then I decide to bring in the orange which I love on this piece. It, it was perfect. Um, there the, the paint I'm using is an iridescent paint called PBO Dyna, and this is the orange yellow iridescent paint. So it doesn't take away from the mica in the um, Inca Gold, it just adds to a little bit more shimmer in that center section. Then I decide to add a Rabon. Rabons are weird creatures. Um, I think that they're kind of going out. I don't, I'm not sure that they're making that many of them anymore, but they stick to everything. But then when you want them to stick, they won't. But then when you don't want them to stick, they will. Like in the case of that little piece of the love stuck to the page and I can't get it off. <laughs> like, really? 
So I think the best thing to do is to cut them apart before you um, peel the sheet and then you know you don't have interference with any other of the rub-ons on the sheet. I don't use it very often. In fact, I think that's the third time I've ever used it. And the first two times I didn't purchase it. Uh, this time those are from Tuesday morning. That that pack was from Tuesday morning. And so I got them for cheap and they're probably discontinued at this point. And then I'm just adding some numbers randomly because I like random numbers just for no apparent reason. I thought they added to the composition using archival black ink. So yeah. I think the last thing I'm going to do is use an artist sponge to sponge around the edge and then I'll be done. So if you like this video, remember to give it a thumbs up, leave me a comment so I know you were here, subscribe if you haven't already, share if you want to, and be sure to use the hashtag to go look at everybody else's pages all over the place because it's fun. That's it for me. Thanks. Bye-bye.